Hey everybody, welcome in back for episode 18. And uh, this one we got a lot of uh, comments from viewers and, and various social medias outlets to uh, ask a couple questions about what we're going to do today. We're going to do cortisol. We're going to start off with cortisol, blood sugar, and insulin. Uh, there seems to be an epidemic among people in their 20s and their 30s ever since 2020 um, at the beginning of the um, whole thing we went through there. What do you think is causing it and was there always an epidemic and mainstream media just didn't cover it? What are your thoughts on that? Well, these three issues um, are connected? Well, they can be, but they can also be parallel. Okay. They don't have to be connected, but they can be. Um, cortisol and insulin are two hormones that are very pro-inflammatory, and they're very different from each other. Uh, so let's let's attack uh, uh, some of these in individually. But one of the reasons why these particular issues uh, are literally epidemic. It's because of our lifestyle, number one. Uh, cortisol is a stress hormone. Insulin is a blood sugar hormone. And elevated blood sugar is the result. And so you got a stressful life. You've got a terrible diet. Terrible diet. You've got other factors such as sleep disturbances and... Uh, uh, other things that are also stressors and also pro-inflammatory. And so the end result of our lifestyle is basically issues with cortisol, insulin, and then as a result, elevated blood sugar. And so how does somebody, so just stress overall lifestyle causes high cortisol? Yes, cortisol is secreted by your adrenal glands in response to stress. Okay. So, for example... And that causes inflammation where? Everywhere? Everywhere, systemically. All throughout your body? Yeah. Yeah, inflammation is not uh, selective. Okay. Uh, some of you may have heard of the term the fight or flight syndrome. And that's what cortisol is, right? And that's what cortisol does. It, along with adrenaline and, and other stress hormones, it's designed to prepare you to either fight, to defend yourself, or to run away. Yeah. And that's a good thing because that's what's kind of saved the human species over the millennia. But when, those, when, you, when you instigate the fight or flight response and generate all these elevated hormones for no reason, in other words, it just happens because you're anxious, you're wound up, you're sleep deprived, uh, etc. Uh, then over time, you begin to not only get excess cortisol and adrenaline production from the adrenal glands, but you begin to exhaust the adrenal glands. Yeah. And that over time can create um, another series of problems. For example, if you overtax the adrenal glands long enough, you won't, uh, you'll have the opposite problem. You won't have enough cortisol. And that creates another entire series of issues uh, because you're heading for adrenal failure. And that's not a very good idea. Yeah, and so, so taking a good full spectrum supplement and maybe even adding panathenic acid and a vitamin B complex is a good place to start for that. Oh yes, I would take a full spectrum formula as those of you know who, who f have followed me, I think that is the foundation and the simplest thing you can do for your overall wellness. But if you're a high stress person or you're a high stress person in denial, uh, I would take a stress uh, supplement as well that com combines the B complex with key uh, herbal extracts, and uh, that'd be the first step. And then I would start to look at little changes I can make in my lifestyle. 
you don't want to make huge changes overnight because that can be more stressful than what you had before. Yeah. But little things, uh, step by step, can all be very helpful. And so what about insulin and blood sugar? You you kind of were on the the beginning of something when you said that, what was it, vice versa, doctors should be testing blood sugar and not insulin or insulin and not blood sugar? Insulin and not blood sugar. And for decades, uh, physicians they were testing blood sugar. Never, ever dreamed, never thought of testing insulin. Yeah, because it. So what should be tested is insulin, not blood sugar. Well, yeah, blood sugar is okay, but if you don't test insulin, blood sugar's readings are meaningless. Got it. And so what happened was is that medicine looked at type two diabetes and even hypoglycemia to some extent. Um, as a disease of excess blood sugar or deficient blood sugar. Yeah. And it's not. Type 2 diabetes is a disease or disorder of excess insulin. The result of that is elevated, is blood, elevated sugar. blood sugar. It doesn't go the other way around. And only very recently have a select number of physicians figured out that if you don't test for insulin levels, uh, you basically don't have any information at all. Yeah, yeah. you got elevated blood sugar, but what, why? What does that mean? So you must test the insulin levels along with the blood sugar. Yes, to get the whole picture. To get the whole picture. Absolutely. Yeah. And taking a supplement like blood sugar support from Phoenix Nutritionals along with the full spectrum support is a good place to start on that. Yes, and so if people want to look into that, that's kind of a good place that to That formula, start. Uh, I developed that formula specifically uh, to address uh, excess insulin production. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's it's uh, very eye-opening and, and very uh, uh, kind of new to me too. Uh, but high insulin and high cortisol can uh, lead to all type of inflammation. And if you suspect that you have high of each one of those... You know, you can get those blood tests done. They're they're very easy to do and um, could be beneficial beneficial for you to know about what, you know, if you have either one. 